Come on in, you all right? Yeah, not bad, mate. A bit tired. But yeah. <laughs> um, how's the team looking ahead of Sunday, Sunny? Um, yeah, last night all good. No no issues out of last night. Obviously, a um, bit of fatigue with some of the boys because I uh, haven't played for a while, but uh, all good. Sonny, um, yeah, no, he's still not right. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's still not feeling 100%, so... Um, he won't train today, so unlikely for the weekend, and uh, we'll see how he's beyond that. James Madison on Saturday, <clears throat> he looked a bit down because he want, obviously wants to be part of a winning team, but how proud of you last night. He showed real maturity and leadership. He spoke really well post-match as well. It sort of justifies you giving him the armband, doesn't it? Well, he was part of a winning team on the weekend too, you know, so, you know, I think... I think I made the point. It's not that Matters didn't play. I thought he actually played well in the first half. It was just a tactical change. I thought it was needed for the team to win. And but I understand the players. You know, uh, obviously, you know, want to play all the time. Uh, but um, yeah, I thought he was really good last night. I thought his leadership throughout the game was good in the way he played. Um, he was really positive on the ball and and kind of when we needed moments of uh, you know creativity or discipline, he was there and. Um, yeah, you know, I thought, especially in the second half, you know, obviously Mikey had that spell where he was, he was, you know, really feeling good, and I think Matt has made a point of just giving, kept giving him the ball, and I thought that showed real leadership because in that moment, it's, you know, it's, it's easy for sort of Matters to, to try and do things himself, but I think he sensed that, you know, Mikey was, was, was doing some special things and kept giving him the ball. So, um, look, he's a vice captain, he's one of our leaders, and. Uh, you know, uh, last night I thought he really stood up and played well, but I thought he played well on the weekend too. So, yeah. But you're delighted you called him Neymar as well, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah, great. Um, look, I, 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 I think we all understand with young players you do have to be really careful, but as I said, after the game, I don't get the sense that um, that's going to affect Mikey at all, you know, and um, and there's no denying he was, he was great last night. Um, I thought he was great the whole game, especially in that period, and... Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, exciting for us. Another player Madison had an influence on last night was Richarlison. <coughs> he, he's never played badly for you, has he? It's just on, on, on and off injuries, isn't it, during your time here? What do you have to do to keep him fit and what do you say to him? Because he's a, a confidence guy as well, but he's played well under you. Yeah, no, he's always he's always contributed when he's played. Um, but like I said, we've worked really hard. And to be fair to his worked really hard, um, you know, this rehab time, not just... For his, from his injury, but just getting him into a better physical condition, and um, he looked good last night. He looked strong. He looked, uh, you know, lean. He was. He had plenty of energy, and he's going to be a really important player for us for sure. Uh, like I said, we, we, we took a, a little bit of a different approach with him. Um, hopefully, with with you know the objective of breaking that cycle where he where he comes back for a bit and breaks down. And um, you know, credit to him, he's worked hard and he's feeling really good about things. Great for him to get a goal last night. Thank you. Thanks, for Charlie. Hi, Ange. Um it's fair to say that Mikey Moore yesterday played really well, but he hasn't started in the Premier League so far. So do you imagine that he's kind of getting to the stage where he's now ready to start a Premier League match? Look, he's he's ready to start any game. It's just, you know, like I said, I, I just feel that, you know, especially with young players, you just got to be, you know, really careful about, you know, their introduction into senior football. He, he's, it's not like he's, you know, um, even last year, he didn't really have a full season of football. He had quite a few injuries or a couple of injuries that left him out. He went from under 18s football to playing very little under 21s before we integrated him. So you have to look at that. I think he's still physically growing and you have to take that into account. So it's, I think he's ready to play, um, start a Premier League game for sure. But it's about, you know, for me, it's about making sure that for us, what we want to do is, is continue to, to kind of develop Mikey in the right way, give him the platform to keep improving. Um, and yeah, so far, whatever we've asked of him, he's, he's, he's made a real impact and um, yeah, the plan is to continue to do that. And in terms of this weekend, it's, it's another away game. Obviously, the last one was away to Brighton. What do you want your players to take away from that performance against Brighton going into this one against Crystal Palace? Uh, yeah, well, look, I mean, I think kind of uh, I addressed that. I think, you know, it, was, it wasn't something that was, has been a common occurrence for us. Um, you know, in that second half of Brighton, we, we, we dropped off in, in many respects um, from the key fundamentals of our game. And, you know, as I said, um, hard to, to say why, but obviously there was some objective markers that we know we fell short of. And, you know, when you've got objective markers, it's not just, 
you know, me talking about it, then players know the levels they need to hit. And, you know, we've bounced back since then. And um, good challenge for us at Palace. Obviously, they're going through a tough spot, but um, still got some talent in that team. And, you know, you get a feeling with Palace is that once they do turn around, they could go on a run like they did last year under Oliver. Um, so it'll be uh, you know, a good challenge for us. You mentioned Palace. Obviously, they are struggling this season. They, they haven't won a Premier League game, sitting in a relegation zone. You mentioned their threats. I mean, where do you think their threats really will be on Sunday? And how dangerous is it coming up against a team who are desperate for that first win of the season? Look, it's always dangerous in the Premier League. They, like you know, you just mentioned the Brighton game. There's never really any games where you go in there and you're thinking that it's going to be a comfortable uh, afternoon or evening. And um, yeah, especially away from home, uh, Premier League is always challenging. As you said, they're, they're going through a tough spell, but um, I've got no doubt they'll they'll come out of it because they do have some some quality in the front third, and you know that they're a hard-working team. And um, I think for us, what's important is that we're on a good run. We've been on a good run for a while, and we want to continue that. And um, and the basis of that good run has been, you know, just how hard we work and and, and sort of sticking to our principles. Hi, Ange. How are you? I'm good, mate. So how special is Mikey Moore? How special can he be? I mean, wasn't this long ago everyone was saying England's next world-class youngster coming through was Jude Belling, which was right, and then Cole Palmer. How how special? Uh, look, oh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what you mean by special. I mean, he's... He's a talented young player. He's a bit behind the guys you've mentioned because, you know, like I said, he's, he hasn't started a Premier League game yet, so we've just got to be careful about sort of... And I think Mikey just wants to be Mikey. Um, as I said after the game, that that what I do see with him is he's he's very mature for a seventeen-year-old. He handles things really well, um, both positive and and negative. Um, he works hard every day, um, and he's making an impact at at, a, at an age where it's very difficult to make an impact um, at this level. So. Um, and that's, but that's the beginning of a process uh, for him and the beginning of his career. And um, you know, what, like I said, from my perspective, it's about making sure that we're constantly um, working with him and, and giving him the opportunity and the platform to keep improving. And if he does, then <coughs> Mikey will be Mikey, and they'll take him to wherever uh, his ability does. And in terms of, if you can explain the process, because sometimes with young players, we all say, oh, like we did with Phil Foden. He should go out on loan rather than sit at Man City and be on the bench and maybe get a few minutes in, a few minutes there. And there'll be some people saying that about Mikey Moore. Why doesn't he go out on loan, play every week? Why stay with you and play just bits and pieces? So what what is the pros and cons of you keeping him for the whole season and maybe getting just those bits and pieces rather than week in, week out, say, starting for Leighton Orient or... Yeah, look, or whatever. I think the key is that you treat education the case individually. You know, I think if you start... Just having a sort of blanket policy, I think that's where you miss. Um, you know, I, I said the key for us this year was to try and expose Mikey to, you know, first team environment. That was more important than him just getting game time, um, because he hasn't been at this level for any length of time. You know, <coughs> other players who maybe had a year of, you know, first team environment need to and haven't had game time. They need to go out and play, but Mikey wasn't in that boat. I know you say bits and pieces, but you know we're only sort of seven, eight games into a Premier League season, and and you know um, with Europe and Carabao Cup, he's already played. You know, if we get between fifteen and twenty games for Mikey between now and the end of the season, I don't think that's bits and pieces. I think that's meaningful uh, for him, and um, and then we assess it from there. But I really think it's important you just treat these things on an individual basis, um, um, because ultimately, what you want to do is what's the best for that player rather than sort of, you know, have a blanket approach. And finally, you've spoken positively about James Madison and, and his leadership last night. Can I ask you about one decision he made, which, and, and whether you were comfortable with it or, or not, was when the penalty was given, it looked to me like he was going to take it, and then suddenly thought, no, I'm going to give it to Richarlison, who probably needed a goal for his confidence. I mean, most clubs have designated penalty takers and managers want to stick with that. Or were you really happy last night that... He gave his mate the chance to get some confidence. I was happy. Care. <laughs> I was happy with the outcome, mate. Uh, I don't care how they get to it. If the ball's in the back of the net, I'm happy. Um, we do have designated penalty takers, but you know, in that moment, I think um, yeah, both both are equally good at taking penalties. Uh, I think Matt is. Um, you know, we went through a thought process and thought, you know, 
uh, it'd be beneficial for us, uh, for Richie to take it. But I was comfortable with, you know, if they threw the ball to Fraser, I'd maybe a bit more worried about it. But um, although he, he, he'd probably say he could do it, but um, but I, I think it wasn't such a, a wild sort of um, you know decision in that moment. I think um, there was some clarity around it, and like I said, um, the important thing was we scored. Charlie. Edge, um, I just wanted to ask you about this team where they are now compared to <clears throat> this time last year when obviously results wise there was that amazing start. I think this equivalent Friday was what made it eight wins, two draws against Palace. How do you see the team now compared to that team that started so brilliantly last season? Yeah, a lot different. Um, you know, uh, I think we're more, certainly more consistent in our footballing. Um, um, more consistent in kind of our performances. Um, look, the results last year were great, but you know, the, and you know, we were playing a lot on you know, enthusiasm and, and real energy we had. Um, but you know, I knew that wasn't sustainable, and you know, pretty quickly we found that out uh, for a number of reasons. Whereas I think this year we've already had some injury disruption, so to speak, and. We've, we've handled them a lot better. I think we've got a much sort of well, more well-rounded squad to handle what's what's ahead of us. We've had a you know heavier games program, but we've we've held that together. So you know we've I think we've progressed as a side. I think players have developed um, in the last twelve months to to another level. When I think about Brennan and Decky and, and and others, so so we're in a better place. But we need to be, and hopefully in twelve months' time we're also in a better place because that's the only way you kind of progress. And just think since the start of the season, I know you talk a lot about growth of players in the team, and I just wondered what you thought were the kind of main growth areas since the start of this season for the team. Like I said, just the consistency of our performances. Um, you know, I think we're, we're within games, we're controlling games a lot more. We're um, <clears throat> you know, less vulnerable in, in certain areas that we were last year, particularly uh, defensively. Um, and just a lot more cohesion in our sort of build-up play, um, you know, in the middle of the front third, and uh, and I think a lot more threatening in that front third. Um, I, I kept saying last year I thought that was the area we needed to improve the most, and I think we're getting there now. I think, you know, <coughs> obviously Brennan, um, you know, is is becoming a real threat there. I think, obviously, Sonny always is. You know, getting Dom in has been fantastic for us, and and. Yeah, with like I said, with Decky in the midfield now and, and Matters, we, we just look a lot more threatening going forward. So, uh, all those kind of areas. Just on Mikey, like for fans, obviously having a player coming through is like one of the most exciting things that can ever happen. What's it like as a manager when you sort of start to see a talent like that blossoming? Like, how exciting is that for you without wanting to big him up too much? Yeah, no, it is. It's it is exciting. It's you know because it, it filters through the whole club because I'm sure. Everyone in the academy takes enormous pride in it. Everyone who's had a sort of a hand in his journey, um, coaches, um, you know, people around him, um, everyone takes pride in that. So the whole club feels good about seeing uh, somebody who's come through, um, you know, um, the program. Um, and yeah, and, you know, as a manager, you, you, you're excited, you know, that at 17 you've got a player who's already, um, like I said, showing a maturity in... in, in in mindset um, where, you know, he, if he he's given himself every chance to be um, the best player he can be because I don't sense in him, like I said, that, you know, sometimes with young players they're exciting but you think, oh, you know, I can already see there could be some pitfalls down the road but I don't sense it with him. So, you know, at 17 you wonder, you know, if he keeps going like that, what's he going to be like at 2021? And uh, hopefully I'm still the manager that benefits from that, mate. But uh, you never know. I am. Uh, Jed Spence, how is he in regards to his fitness? Getting closer, um, so we're hoping kind of next week join back in training. Okay. Uh, Dane Scarlett's had a really good past 10 days or so. Scott England and the 21s, a couple of important goals for Oxford as well. How pleasing is that for you and the club? Because, I mean, it maybe hasn't gone the way you hoped in regards to regular starts for Oxford so far. Yeah, uh, look, it's important for Dane. Um, you know, for all our guys out on loan, part of the reason put them out on loan is is to get game time, not to um, sort of um, sit on the bench. And um, but again, they you know they have to earn that. And um, 
Yeah, it's important for Dane. It's an important year for him. He needs to play. He needs to score goals at that level um, to, to sort of make sure he keeps uh, progressing. Um, so pleased that, you know, like I said, the last 10 days with England and with uh, with Oxford, he's got himself a couple of goals. And he's just got to maintain that now. You know, just, like I said, uh, <coughs> whilst, you know, we, we put him out and loan with the best intentions, uh, a lot of it is up to the players themselves to, you know, to go there and make an impact. So... Um, yeah, pleased that he started to do that.